I got six o'clock. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Start out with department heads. Richard. Good. Yeah, that's been working really good. We survived the storm of the century. Yeah, yeah. Not today, but whatever. Nothing too bad. A few trees down, some limbs, whatever. Um, did some work done on the transportation for Glenn. Helped him down there. Something he asked me about last spring. I think he came up pretty good down there. A bunch of gravel and built it up for him and getting ready, I guess, for next year he wants to do some paving down there. So I told him we'd be better off to do it this year and give it the winter to settle in and did some stuff down in the landfill a couple different days and that's all finished up. So <clears throat> the normal fall maintenance, the gravel and a lot of leaf blowing and getting everything cleaned out and was, we survived pretty well after this last storm, though, for the rain and everything. I was pretty happy, but other than that, everything's going good and normal just piece by piece getting everything ready for the winter which is coming soon as we know hopefully not for a while but well, other than that I think everything's pretty good. I just want to say Richard I want to thank you very much and your crew for dealing with the stuff at the landfill. Um, that was a surprise to all of us in, in a way but not in a way and uh, we went down and dealt with it in two weeks, where if we'd had to sit here at a board, we would be discussing it tonight to get it done. And, uh, it'd no, be another two weeks, and then we'd be behind the eight ball. No, and well, and, um, I appreciate it. And I'm going to, to the board, I'm going to wait. It's going to be a week, two, before I get all the bills, and then I'll, okay. just, I'll get it all together and give you the yep. bill, okay? Appreciate that. that. I'm making sure that it shouldn't come out of your budget, because it was as not far as that. anticipated. I think, it, I think it went very well, but I do have a couple recommendations that I want to make, that whether the board does it, whoever does it, that we need to keep after that now, because... To me, you work that hard to get something like that. Don't let it go five or six years because next year you could have something to sit down with a bush saw because we cut it back six or eight feet all the way around the fence and reseeded everything back as it needed. But it's just now it's a low maintenance thing. Right. And you got to do that every year, or at least even a couple times a year because it just it's really easy right now. But if you let that go a couple of years, it's going to be right back. Much, same boat. Well, we're back where you were. Yep. You are. It's just. To put that out there, yep. it's a good point. Call that is a very good point. It should be done. Up a little plan to make sure. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Even if, even if the board says to me, "Hey, can you get one of your part timers to do this?" I'm okay with that. But just it needs to be done because we don't need to go through that again. No. We don't. Mm -hmm. As far as that, that's just how I feel about it. For sure. No, I really appreciate you good. jumping right on it. Yep. It's a big help. Public comment? Anything for the highway? Jim. I'm busy, still driving around two calls a day. I think we'll end up somewhere around 600 for the year. Should be a little less than last year. Who knows what happens between now and then. Um, had a good interest in thermal imager training last Thursday night. Sort of fun, pretty interesting. Uh, between the good economy and everybody being working extra long at the jobs to deal with stuff, people are getting a little more selective on calls sometimes. But ones that go to, but um, you know, all the other departments are kind of the same way. You know, what I mean by that is you get a CO detect call with no illness, you're not getting these people, you're getting one or two. If it turns out to be something bad, more people come. But it's, uh, yeah, we're seeing the effects of that. And I've done this long enough, I've done that before. Economy's good. People are so busy at work. They got a lot of demands placed on by work, and they're not as available <coughs> as that would. And the economy's bad, and people have as much to do, and they're more available for volunteer things. But we're okay. We like say it's not different than any other <coughs> department. Um, got all the truck inspections done. Pleasantly surprised we didn't have to replace mm -hmm. two sets of tires we thought we were going to this time. So get one more inspection, so a lot of things. <coughs> truck tires, truck things. So that's good. Anything on board? We're working on a bloodborne pathogen policy for the town. Would you be able to send us your SMG on that so that we we'll make sure they read the same because you don't want one reading one way and another one reading another way? <laughs> Is a new fire truck on the road? No. No? Almost. <laughs> um, it's it's a combination of a bunch. It seems like it's been forever, but we're so busy, we don't even think about it. You know, like we need to, to order some things to go on. Mm -hmm. Two pieces of suction hose, some fittings, some spanners, 
So we just got them order a couple weeks ago. Stuff's starting to come in now. So we're not pressuring the dealer to finish his thing. Um, they are working on their thing. The, the truck that it's replacing, the, the cascade <coughs> fill system that is a uh, explosion proof container thing that you put your bottles in and you fill that's coming off the old truck, going in the new. That's taken off the old and they're putting it in the new. It's, it's proceeding along. Just Nobody's got the time to really champion it and drive it home real quick. So it's just sort of happening at a more gradual pace. Public comment? Haka! Um, soccer season is there about two weeks left. We have uh, the Valley Cup tournament this weekend, which is an annual tournament we go to at the um, Kennett Middle School. It's an all-day event. We play a minimum of three games. If we're lucky enough, we will uh, advance to play in the playoffs. It'd be probably about usually about 12 teams there from all over Carroll County, Maine. Um, teams are doing very well. I believe right now we're five and one. Um, we've had one rain out, um, but uh, kids having a good time. The younger kids, the K-1-2s, um, that's that's going well. That's I often say that's like herding cats at that age. Whether it's T-ball or that, you, you keep the things short, quick, simple, um, keep them moving, and hopefully they learn a little bit and they have fun and they want to continue to do it in the future. Um, that's that's always a lot of fun, but it can be challenging at times. Um, sure. You'll go one week and it's like it's a dream, and then you go back the next week and it's like they forget everything they did. It's it's just the age you deal with when you're dealing with you know five, six, seven year olds, but. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, and the parents seem to be enjoying it. The kids seem to be having a good time. Um, I'll be getting down um, all, the, all the fertilizer and all the treatment for the grass. Um, be getting that down next week, and um, hopefully uh, it will be you know not too hard of a winter with too much ice, and we won't have a lot of kill on it like we've had some years. But uh, <coughs> you might say it does look nice what they've done there next door. Um, it's uh, Clean up the tree line on both sides of that fence. It looks, looks really good. Came on nice people. We had a home game there last night, and people were commenting on it, wondering what was going on. And I told them briefly, and um, they got very positive feedback on it. Um, so, and I will be trimming all that stuff one more time before winter, between the wreck road and the fence. I've done that a couple times, and I'll knock it down again with the mower. It's to the point now where I can get it with, with my mower. Um, and we'll be starting registration for basketball. I don't know for sure, but I think I'm looking for a girls basketball coach for a different sixth grade team. I have someone who might be interested, but I, if she does do it, I don't think she can commit full time. So I am going to be looking. So I'll be getting some ads out for that. Um, she thought she could commit to full time, but I think she can only do part time now. So um, it's always better to have two if you can. Um, People have lives and they get busy and they can't commit to be there every single night all the time. Um, and that that will be starting middle of November of the season for the um, K through six basketball. So that will be kicking off a couple weeks after soccer ends. Um, adult programs are ongoing and uh, we'll be like I mentioned last time I was here. We'll be starting um, right after Thanksgiving is when we start the adult programs at the gym at the school, the basketball, the pickleball, and those things. They'll start up um, seven to nine, three nights a week. And those will be kicking off, like I said, right after Thanksgiving. We might start right after that. I know there was some talk, and maybe I just made this up in my head. Is there anything about an ice skating rink? This month is there was talk about doing one in front of the historical center. Um, was that rec department or somebody else was going to do they it? They approached me about it. Um, a couple people did. Uh, I met with them last spring. Um, they haven't gotten back with me. They were going to put it somewhere in front of the historical center. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, still in the planning stage as far as I know. Oh, may I add to that? Yep. Okay. The, where they think they're going to do it now is mm -hmm. not there because um, of the insurance thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they're talking about um, where the kids' park is. Remick Park? Like they, I guess a couple of people checked out this area. No, they're not after a huge thing, mm -hmm. but just a 
what they could accommodate there. Yeah. And so that's what I think that they're talking is that about. Level? Is there enough level spot? I, I wasn't the one yeah. doing the landscaping yeah. thing. Who's, who's doing it? Who's leading it? Uh, I think it was TVC. And John oh. Wacker and someone <coughs> went to look at it and to see about whether it was, and, and the report back was that it would be, it would accommodate. Uh, maybe not huge, huge, but enough for the people to enjoy themselves. Who's the TVC? TM North Visitors Council. Okay, thank you. Too many initials. I know I heard it discussed, and I yeah, couldn't remember yeah, what the. Was. Yeah, I was approached um, by two or three people and met with them, and then um, I hadn't heard about this. I just yeah. heard about this. And I guess the questions were that, that they had were I believe it was Bruce Robinson who in his barn someplace, and the old boards, the old, yeah. which are probably no good anymore, who knows? My guess would be probably not. That's right. Yeah. But whatever, I think it would be good to talk to each other, yeah. you guys, um, because it, it might not be that hard to accomplish yeah. if we just said let's. Yeah. Is there lighting back there? No. No. You need light? Well, there, well, there is. It could, it could be during the day. Oh, yeah. like, <laughs> I think that what they were envisioning was like, a, like the kids during the week, uh, either some vacations or after school or whatever, and on like Sunday afternoons or Saturday afternoons for the grown ups and have hot chocolate and music, and they had some grand plans. Just has uh, to be there. Yes. What if, the one thing that's always got me about the ice skating rink is why don't they just go to Shakora Lake and clean off a place? I've always wondered why they never did that. I mean, uh, just me, when I was growing up, that's what we did. Right. We just cleaned a place off on Shakora Lake, and your dad oh, was really thing. good. If the ice got bad, or Willie, whoever, would come up with a fire truck and just flood it, and you're good to go. Yeah. That's just, that's how I feel about it. I do. It's just, it's a lot less maintenance. <laughs> and a lot less liability. Well, but that's I mean, I what I was saying is, yeah. if the park is a town property, would Primex even, we'd have to contact them just, to see if they cover it. Or just a suggestion. I don't well, I know how you folks feel about it. The I, I really knew you once used to be a skating rink, too, well, and that it, took a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. The, the fire department was there all the time. Yeah, that yeah. was a lot. And then, uh, you know, I mean, there was a space down at the Durrell. Yeah, the Durrell. 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 When I first took over, we had, we had a hockey team. Right. What we ran into was as people went more and more to indoor rinks, nobody would come here and play us. So we had to always go on the road, and then we used it for a while for phys ed classes, for Friday ski groups that did the ski would go there and skate, but once the ham opened up, nobody wanted outdoor ice, and the numbers dropped, and for the amount of time it took to maintain it, the selectmen made a decision they are, they are a big job to not to do it. There's yeah. no question about that. Because when it snows, you go shopping. And it rains, and you get sun, and it's... it's, it's Can't beat Mother Nature. Right. Yeah. All right. Anything else for it? Um, you said that... Uh, K-1-2 soccer. How many kids do you have playing in there? We had 18 sign up. Eight? 18. 18. Yeah. And what about the older group? 13. 13. Yeah. And that was the uh, third through six? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> Public comment for the rec? Police department. Uh, good evening. Um, this is as usual, make of holiday, little incidents. A um, bit of uptick in school calls, juvenile complaints, um, to be expected as we move into the school year. Um, and then I just wanted to bring this up again. It's next Saturday, the October 26th. From 10 to 2 in our lobby is your opportunity to bring back all your unwanted medications. It's the DEA's National Drug Take Back. Um, all the uh, area agencies are doing it, so um, if you happen to be somewhere else in the valley, you might be able to find an agency there to drop them off. Um, as, as I've said before, no syringes, no liquids, um, obviously no recreational drugs, um, but any of your unwanted or over-the-counter type stuff you want to get rid of, uh, bring it by the PD, there's a drop box there, you can throw it in yourself and be anonymous to it or whatever. Um, and that's it. Do you get many when you do that? Yeah, we do. We, put, we, we bring back about 15, 20 pounds of meds. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, do you have an extra poster? I, I got this one for you. Oh, okay. Over here. okay, thank you. Um, yeah. yeah. 
I put it on the calendar on the website, but do you have a smaller one I can a scan? Or you could email me I'll one? I'll see if I can find it. They didn't give us any email stuff. Okay. I'll check the website and see if they have anything. Okay. But it is on our calendar. Yeah. It's a biannual thing, so they do it twice a year, um, in the spring and in the fall. Um, it's kind of a big deal. Uh, it does kind of get them off the streets. Kids aren't cleaning out their parents' medicine cabinets and having pill parties. Um, those type of things, so it's just good to get them. Um, they are allowing uh, disposal of vape pens, which is kind of a big issue right now. Uh, E-cigarettes, vape pens. Um, so you can dispose of the pods. Um, as far as the vape pens go, the batteries have to be removed. If you can't remove the batteries, don't bring them and don't dispose of them. But if you can, if there are, there's different devices out there. If it's a device you can remove the battery yourself, then you can dispose of the rest of it and keep the battery. Anything else from the board? Public comment for the police department? Economic development. A couple of things. Okay, but first of all, from the Lakes Region Planning Commission, I want just to give an announcement that it might work for people, I don't know. Um, the um, Diesel Emulsions Reduction Act, and um, there's seven hundred thousand dollars available from the New Hampshire uh, DES, and it's for the replacement of older diesel engines for towns and schools, and um, it also covers engine refits and I and upgrades. So I don't know if that works for anybody. I mentioned it to Richard; it didn't work for him, but I didn't know. Anyone has diesel anything. Okay. Um, also, I was at a broadband, um, Carroll County broadband this morning, and that was great. Becky, I know, is going to talk more about that, so I'm not going to go into it all, but it was very informative and things are going along very nicely. And for economic development itself, um, there's, let's see, we were going to have a health forum November 12th, and uh, we decided that instead of that, uh, we're going to be supporting the TCNA and what they what they do uh, at an event that they're having on this Sunday, which I hope a lot of people go to. It's the, um, there's going to be a musical group called the Walls of Grass, Wall of Grass, uh, and it's at the barn at the preserve, and it's from 5.30 to 9.30, and from 5.30 to 6.30, there's two food trucks, there's going to be Cheese Louise and the Italian people, uh, that's going to be there, and then indoors from 6.30 on. So when, I, when George Cleveland heard about this, who represents um, the Mount Washington Valley age-friendly, Carroll County, uh, he was all excited. They're going to have a table. And uh, he knows what we're doing for economic development, so we're going to be there too. And so I encourage people. And the other thing that's come up uh, is that we're co-sponsoring with the Cook Library on November 5th, which I think is a Tuesday, from 12 to 1. And um, it matters because economic development at one point wanted to do something for the veterans. And this is focusing on a Google presentation about helping businesses and helping vets particularly. It's aimed to the vets mostly. And that's why I'm glad you're back. Um, because we need to get your contact list so we can get messages out to the veterans. Um, and so that's, as I said, from 12 to 1 at the Cook Library where it's not only for the vets, but it's geared to them, but other people in town who want to have more knowledge about what can I, how can I improve how efficient I am uh, on a computer, and that would be helpful. So that's about it. So that's a computer-based training? Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else from the board? Public comment? Thank you. You're welcome. Friends! Family, townhouse. Um, just a couple of things. Has any um the check from Jeep been received yet by the town? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's yes. I will be talking about that too. All right. Um, broadband was at the townhouse. It went really well. Um, this morning. Um, Beverly with the senior luncheon. Uh, she, we've talked to her about the issue she had on Monday, and it's been discussed. So hopefully we won't run into that problem going forward. And that's it. Thank you, Becky, for opening the townhouse. No problem. Any comments from the board? 
And we've got uh, the ductwork is going to transplant. Uh, I sent him an email and I got it back, and he said he would get back to me with a date. Oh, okay. All right, so. Thank you. All right, moving along. New business. Let's open the bids for the 40th audit. The companies that want to do the audit. How many do we have? Two. More than one. Letter that they're not going to bid. Who's not going to bid? Uh, Robinson Green. Green. That was a big Here's a, um, the one that we have now, did they bid? Yes, that's right. Um, no, we have that. Okay. Yeah. It's the same thing that they already told us? No, that was just for one. That was just for one year. So I don't know what their three prices are. Yeah. I don't care what. Hey, let me assist you. Here you go. Thank you. I'm glad you turned that door. You. Oh, thank you. I'm going to wait for it on this. Nice. This one is going to be that. It's probably only yeah. two sheets of paper. Yeah, it's, it's all packed. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a present. Keep going. Don't worry about it. I stole one. You got one? Oh, I stole this. Oh, thank you. The open that commercial last. <laughs> oh, they're bribing us to give this present. Yeah. <laughs> like a free pen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Looks pretty close to my pen. And it was for Lovitz and Green. Thank us for including their firm in our the, uh, recent RFP, but we'll not be submitting a proposal. Yeah, that's the uh, one. Mm -hmm. It looks like. Um, Olsen and Sanderson PA gave their proposal of estimates by financial statement audit, single audit if necessary, and then hourly rates. Page 22. Yeah, page 22, sorry. Let me get this real quick. That's a big number. I, uh, I, I bypassed all the color. What's the big number? So they quoted the same price for a financial statement audit for three years. A federal compliance audit for three years is the same. And then the hourly rates that you need them to do their audits. <coughs> And then page 22 in the next book. How about that? Must be in the SOP that says page 22 is. Good thing. Well, hmm. a little bit of difference. Oh, okay. Maybe something Ooh. doesn't happen. <laughs> And they also, uh, Vashon and Kalki also presented the same way. The audit costs, their audit costs go up after year two for the all-inclusive minimum audit, and then a single audit, they remain the same for all three years. <coughs> and then their hourly rates are listed for shareholders, mm -hmm. managers, senior staff, and staff in general as they perform their audits. So. Considerable amount of difference in price. I'll read. Uh, Considerably. Uh, Vashon Kolke. Kolke. It's pretty close. Um, for it's an all-inclusive maximum price for the service of audit and related reports for the physical year 2019 is twelve thousand eight hundred dollars. 
for 2020 would be $12,800. For 2021 would be $13,200. Their single audit, if required, for year 2019, 2020, and 2021 is $2,000 for each of those years if necessary. Hourly rates, shareholder, $180, a manager, $161, a senior is $131, and staff is $103 to $125. And the audit, uh, the prices from Pulaski and Sanders. Who we presently use, correct? No, no we use Cloutet. Okay. The, uh, the uh, financial statement auto uh, yeah, audit for 2019, 2020, and 2021 is $9,725. The estimated fee for compliance of a single audit, if required, for each of the three years, 20. 19, 2020, and 2021 is $2,200 for each year. Their hourly rates, the directors are $140 per hour, managers are $110 per hour, senior accountant is $150, staff auditors $60 to $95 per hour. So senior accountant was $105. You said $150. Oh, excuse me, $105. Yeah. Thank you for correcting me. One, 105 for the senior accountant and staff auditors 60 to 95 per hour. Willie, before we make a vote on this, um, oh, we got to read through it a little bit. I thought yeah, we, we opened I, I them would, and looked at they're them. Not, they're not. They're not exempt. You could actually they have them come in if you have if you <coughs> want to have ask questions. Well, I just think I'd like to go idea. through because yeah. one includes training to staff and one doesn't mention training to staff and stuff so yeah, we have a couple and what's of the difference between a financial statement audit and an audit and related reports because they listed as financial statement audit and the other one listed as all-inclusive audit and related reports I don't know what she would what they would include in the Debated reports. Maybe um, will they do the MS5? You know, Kluke does the MS5. The um, other one says form MS535. They'll do. Oh, it's the same. Form 535. Yeah. yeah. It used to be five. That's what I say. I think we need five there. Yeah. So. Right. No, I agree. Yeah. But I just want definitely. So I believe I I believe in the RFP. I said that we would let them know within two or three weeks what the decision was. The decision was not going to be made tonight. Yeah. yeah. Just do we want to bring them in, or do you guys just want to read this and see if we're smart enough to figure it out? Well, I think <laughs> if we could read through it and then, see if you we know, need to bring them in. Yeah. put in, if we've got questions, put it in and say, have them come in at our next. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, you know, so, I mean, I think we can do that. Though. You got homework, and then we'll discuss this at our next work session. Next so, meeting is next, Thursday. next meeting is the 24th. It's really full with budgets, but we can certainly spend some spend a few time minutes on that. Yeah. It's not going to take us long to do. No. I'll put that on the agenda. Either we'll have it figured out or we won't. Then we'll have to call them in. So. Right. All right. Good. This one is some of the presents. The New Hampshire DES closed landfill and possible solar array. Willie, that was you. I yep. thought you'd want to talk about well, landfill right. and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, we were going to talk about that on the 10th, and we had a letter from uh, DES saying that we were at a letter of deficiency at the landfill uh, with the surface and around the fence and stuff that Richard has uh, worked on these last two weeks to get fixed and up to date. Um, I think that, you know, the information we got back from council on the pilot and the price of the pilot, uh, I think that that's a low amount and there needs to be more study done. And I would like an opportunity to talk with the firm that is interested in doing it 
I'd like to come out with a win-win on all sides. You know, win for the town, win for the company that wants to do it, and win for the landowners. Because um, I think it's a good, good project. Um, so the, the transfer station is different than the ones with the pilot. So, I mean, there's two separate things because one's private property. Uh, but with the pilot one, I really want to do a little more research and find out. They said it cost about $2 million to build it. You know, if you were going to assess them on $2 million, if that's the value of it, it would be certainly a lot more than $2,800 a year in a tax. So there's a lot more to put together on that. And I, I, would, I haven't had an opportunity to call and talk with them directly to get some of the foundational information that I think we need. As far as the uh, old landfill cover, the town property, um, I still would want to also talk to them more about that because they said that some of it appeared to be in the floodplain, and I'm not sure that any of that actually is in the floodplain. I would have thought that when uh, we closed the landfill and put the cover on it, they wouldn't have allowed it to be done in the floodplain. Yeah, for sure. So I think there's probably some documents that will prove that out. So that could be a, a benefit there. And also to understand what their maintenance would be and all of the pieces that would go into it. Um, I think it's a great idea if we can actually use that piece of property to create revenue and maintenance of the facility and generate maybe some uh, electricity that's not fossil fuel based is a great plus for the town. Um, so I, I, would, I would like to spend more time on it. I just have been out straight with a bunch of other stuff that I haven't had time. He did ask for me to send him costs for costs. our electric costs for the landfill. So if I can do that, he said he would do a little bit more homework yeah. for the landfill one, not the private, for, not right. for the private company. Right. But Andrew from the private company did ask if we had made a decision. I said you would be speaking about it tonight, yeah. and then maybe I can just have him reach out to you. Yeah, I'd, li I'd like to talk to him because I mean, I, you know, <laughs> are you not I don't, I don't think twenty eight hundred is enough. Right. Um, are, you, are you ready for that? If I give him your information, they reach out to you. Yeah, you can reach out to me, and I okay. can say, yeah, you know, I can talk to him. And say, yeah, yeah, call me tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. whatever. But well, that's yeah, okay. if that's agreeable if with that's the board, with the board, if that's right. agreeable yes. with the board, would you like to? Would you have that information by the next meeting on the thirtieth? You think that's too soon? Or? Maybe. I don't know how much of them. They're kind of in a, they're not going to get anything done this fall. Right. I mean, I think the well, so we're not in a dying rush. I, I, don't, I think it's too far. I mean, because they've got to go in if they're going to do these things. They've got to go in and clear the land. Yeah, yeah. Got, you know, to get, but they, they want to get going so they can get their permitting and anything else right. they need to do. And just their surveying done because they need to survey it out. So I, I, I will definitely talk with them and okay. see what pieces are in play back So the plan is once you're ready, then just talk to Darlene and get it well, on the agenda. Well, have him call me tomorrow uh -huh. if that's... And are you good. ready for me to send a formal letter to um, DES regarding the work you've done at the landfill? I've sent him all of your... My updates. Of your, all of your update sheets. I haven't heard back from him. Um, okay, good. Um, I didn't have time because I was without power all day today. Uh, but I will finish that update again when okay. it's sent out. And state where we're at, which is, I think okay. we've complied with everything that they've requested. Did Jeff Sears call you? I haven't talked to him yet. Okay. I was going to call him today and just never okay. got to that no, point. So that's, um, but so I will, once you do that, I will, I'll I will get talk to him right. and I'll write it all up in another sheet and say, I think we're done. If there's any other problems, please. Because that grant money will come to us. Right. Well, that's the as reason I jumped done. right on it. Well, was, I didn't want to lose out on the right. 11000 I mean, we actually have until June 30th of next year, but we're not waiting because that's their fiscal year. The, but the they'll send it to us they'll now, it so it comes in done. this year. Yes. Yeah, because otherwise yeah. we'd skip a whole year in getting that money. Right. And then when the, it's paid off, we're not going to get any money anyway, so we might lose the year. Right. So, all right, so, so no hurry. So whenever you finish it and you've done no, all your no research. Hurry tomorrow? To, huh? No hurry tomorrow? No. <laughs> okay. Then we just get on the agenda. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I will work on both of those issues because I think they're good for the town. More to follow. Yep. The New Hampshire Solar. Yeah. Well, that, we just talked about that was part of it. All right, I guess we're moving right along here. Signature file. Where is it all? Is this right in front of me? 
green folder, I believe. Green folder. Green. I think this is a two discussion board. Alrighty. Motion to approve the selections meeting dated Thursday, October 3rd. Is that the new revised version? Yes. Yes. Is that there for that one? No. No. Yes, you yes, were. Yes, you were. So was the other one. Yeah. You were there. He was. I was. It was really important. Don't you remember it? Don't they all run together? Oh, yeah, you were. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Discussion. As long as all the corrections are in, in this. All in favor. Aye. aye. Did everybody say aye? I do. Aye. 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 The ayes have it. This one you weren't in. No. Motion to approve the selectmen's non public meeting for the work session meetings. Is this selectmen's non public meeting or is that separate? One? This is the work session meeting. Motion to approve the selectmen's work session meeting Thursday, September 26th. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And one abstention. Aye. I didn't say aye. I'm saying aye now because somebody wants to make sure we do. Yeah. But you didn't yell that. No, he was, it wasn't here. This is the minutes for the non public session dated September 26. Uh, session 1. Aaron, you were not here. No. Motion to approve? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So I don't know why I'm there. I already read it. I don't know what's going on. 2019 manifest signature form for accounts payable, which is $311,005.18. Year to date cash used is $8,094,381.33. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Twenty nineteen manifest signature form dated ten twenty four for payroll costs, which is twenty nine thousand eight hundred seventy nine dollars and forty two cents. Year to date cash used is seven million seven hundred and eighty three thousand three hundred seventy six dollars and fifteen cents. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> this is a discretionary preservation easement release. Say that three times. <laughs> Which is going to be for map number 407 lot 65. And this is going to be because the bond burned down. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is from the State of New Hampshire Department of Safety, Division of Emergency Services and Communications, otherwise known as 911, to appoint Darlene as Data Operations Liaison Primary mm -hmm. and Secondary would be Robin Frost. Motion to approve. Uh, second. <laughs> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 This requires one signature. This is a letter that's going to be sent out. It's a notice of violation of the and it's a cease and desist order for the public health nuisance for map number 215, lot 1 on 725 Turkey Street in Tamworth. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 This is the medical coverage and rates for 
medical renewal for 2020. The following rate shall apply from January 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2020. You want me to read those numbers? <laughs> well, they increased by 7.4%. The oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll just give you a single is $995.84, two persons $1,991.67, and family is $2,688.76. I'm assuming that's per month, right? Yeah. yeah. Ouch. Yeah. <clears throat> Did I say a motion to approve? Second. We could discuss this forever, but it ain't gonna get us nowhere. All in favor? Aye. 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 And this requires one signature. Aye. Alrighty, that was painful. Selectman's update. Okay, you always. Well, I'm going to bring up two things that were in our signature file. Okay. One is this letter from the IRS. I think since none of us know what this is, I suggest we send something back to the IRS saying, have no idea who you're talking about, what you're talking about, and we're certainly not going to pay their $2,600 just for something we know nothing about. It's a scam. I don't think it's a scam because they've got an employee ID number and stuff. So, so but send it back. Make you take send it, a formal not, letter. That, send it back. Before I did anything, I just want to make sure nobody knew anything about it. Wow. Well, even if we did, right? What's but at it least for? I could pass it on right. to somebody. And the second one is, I think we ought to send a letter to the Lakes Region Tourism Association saying, "No, thank you. We're not interested." And then they won't send us another one looking for two hundred and fifty dollars to participate. On the back, they want two hundred and fifty dollars to get the town of Camelot within their Lakes Region Tourism pamphlet. Hmm. Don't think we need it. I don't know who it is. I have no idea. From it says bicentennial. That was a long time ago. Well, yeah, but right. I mean, there's it's indicating that the uh, can we show that to year. economic it's development? It's actually your no estate. They've got an ID. 2013. Right. That doesn't mean that's a real number. No. I would just send it back and say nobody in town knows anything about this. Do they threaten to throw us in jail if we don't pay it? No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Will they connect? I'm actually going to look at that. Be shown to the economic development. Is that shit? They, yeah. They, oh, wait, wait. Which? The Lakes Region. No, no, no. The Lakes Region. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. For the tourists or bringing business here. I mean, we've got our own visitors council and everything else, so... I don't think we should be paying two hundred and fifty dollars for it. To get our name in a book. Right. If they want to this is it. Yeah. This is not from the Lakes Region Planning. No, oh. it's from the Lakes Region Tourism. Oh no, okay. totally I thought it was the Lake Region Planning. Planning. Thank you for it. Okay. Okay. So we did hold a broadband committee meeting today, which was very well attended. Um, especially from the public. We had people come in from Wolf Row and everything to attend. We do have some homework that the towns are gonna have to start putting out um, some information, um, uh, information that's hard to get, which is going to require some legislative changes, too, which Jeb Bradley and stuff are going to be presenting a bill in the Senate because the House is closed down right now for new bills, and we've got bills that are going to have to be addressed next year uh, because, like, E911 doesn't release their information, which is easy the easiest way to mark where houses are and calls are. That's one of the most... They say they can't release it in the state of New Hampshire, so things like that we're working on. Um, I will be putting up the latest update, the last update, the two-page update we got on the exchange. And Darlene, we had talked about putting an area on the web page where people could access. I haven't seen that yet, so I haven't sent yeah, anything I thought, in. I thought um, Robin did that with the last one you gave us. Well, I looked under committees and stuff. I couldn't see it, so if you can tell okay. me where to go. Uh, we held a sewer commission meeting on uh, this week, then last week. I don't know what week, last week. Uh, we are working on the ordinances. Now, we have not heard anything back from DES. Uh, we may wait nine months like we waited nine months to get numbers down. Who knows? 
Um, once we get the ordinances reworked, we have some questions, which um, their secretary has been remiss and not sent them to the chairman, so he emails the questions now at the state, but she will get to that this weekend. Because uh, we have some questions in the ordinances, the way it was worded, what they actually meant. Uh, I have the town bills now. We uh, got another $2,000 bill from the lawyer to clean up the closing paperwork so it could be signed. So I think the town roughly is about up to $9,000 being owed by the sewer commission for legal fees. And that's about it. We're going to have one more meeting this month or the middle of next month, depending on what manifest needs to be signed. How often do you guys meet? Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to meet at least monthly because we have bills now and the manifests have to be signed. It's not as easy as it used to be where they could just write out the checks and send them through the mail. So we call a meeting when we get the manifest bills so that we don't have to. But uh, the ordinances are primary. The lawyer wants the ordinances done immediately too. And um, we are looking at, Primex said there's nothing there, but we do have buildings there and we hopefully got to get a letter from the fire chief whether the building meets, the generator building meets requirements because the generator company won't come and fix the generator that hasn't worked for seven years until the building's fixed, then it's a mess. But onward and upward. Do we get insurance? No, because Primex said they didn't need to insure anything because well, there's nothing. Well, it is, it's, it's insured under the It's town's insured under the town, but co we got to. Coverage. They say we can't carve out because, but we're going to get them an inventory list because we have to carve right. it out because it can't cost the town anything. Right. It was passed that way. Right. So the bottom line still is if we lose Our power in town for any time, we're in deep Don't doo -doo. flush. Don't flush. <laughs> That's the word. You can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. 28 people should. Um, what else did I go to? Like here. Mm. So, in theory, if we lose power, this building should be shut down. Carroll County Broadband met with Governor Wentworth Regional School District. They're going to be meeting with the library group from Conway. There's a library group between Conway and North Conway and Madison and Freedom and all that. Uh, we're trying to get into Conway Cannon High School system to let them know because there's there's a lot of information that's going to have to be gathered. Like one of the things that's going to be hard to gather is what's called home gap. And that's because of the population we have up here, the kids that don't have access to the internet, so blizzard bag days and stuff can't be completed unless they can find a fast food place or something like that, which is not something you can capture through an E911 or anything. So we sort of portrayed to Governor Wentworth that we are going to need their help obtaining some information at times. I think that's it. I'm going to a New Hampshire Health Officers all-day conference on October 30th in Concord. It's supposed to be out by the time so I can get back for the selectmen's meeting. And we have an ambulance committee meeting on the 21st to start the contract negotiations, so I haven't gotten anything from anybody on the department, fire department side if they really want something in this contract or don't want something in this contract. And it's action group that we're working with. That's it for me. Aaron. Uh, I didn't have any meetings, but I did, Richard called me and was wondering if I knew anybody that would be interested in the shoveling, and I did reach out to three people, one no, two were interested, I gave him names and numbers, he's going to call them tomorrow. That's what you sidewalk? Mm -hmm. shoveling no, here. the town office, townhouse, all that. And two were pretty interested in it. I gave him the names and the numbers tonight before the meeting started. He's going to call him tomorrow and give me a shout and see if he got anywhere, see if they're going to come in and talk with us. Because if that if there's another person there. Yeah, I'm, I think he's going to call you tomorrow, too. To, Richard? Yes. Okay. Because I did mention that you had one mm -hmm. person, yep. and he said he'll contact you tomorrow. Okay, good. That's about all I've done. Willie, besides walking around the landfill, the old dump. <laughs> well, I think I spouted off enough about that. Um, the other thing I went to, the Ossipy transfer station, which is very interesting. Um, they bail uh, plastics, they bail uh, aluminum cans, they bail paper, and they bail cardboard. Um, they actually are making some revenue on those items because they, they hold them until they have a full load, um, you know, a tractor trail load, so they're putting out a considerable amount at a time. Um, you know, 
it's interesting. It's all good to put all this stuff together. The question is, is it feasible? Do we have the space? Uh, you know, if you're going to do those things, you have to have a building to store the paper and the cardboard and the plastic in. And, you know, you still do have to sort it. So when you start you doing those things, bailers. you have to um, hire more employees, too. Oh. Um, so you have to look at the whole balance of cost-effectiveness and all that. And I mean, the, the uh, there was Glenn um, and three people from the recycling committee and myself were down there. So how many employees do they have? They have three, full time. How many days a week no. are they open? Yeah. They're open. Uh, I think it was they're open five days a week. Yeah, I guess I thought. Yeah. So. And of course, they're servicing, servicing twice the number of people we are. You know, and I'm sure their summer population increases a little more than ours. So, uh, the center for it. I mean, it, it's all interesting, good information, and you know, who knows how it's going to come together. Um, I'm sure I went and did something else that I wasn't supposed to. So, that's enough. Mel, <laughs> I went attended the broadband meeting this morning. A lot of information. And um, spoke with the people, you know, a person that was interested in the shoveling. I wanted more information. Um, on the, the shoveling thing, I don't know when we're going to discuss it, but we'll discuss it tomorrow. There's gonna, there needs to be some changes on mm -hmm. the townhouse yeah. one. So <coughs> we get that right this year. So that's it. I think we should discuss that. Should we just do it now so now. we can because yeah. be ready? We're you know we're running out of time. <laughs> no, really. With the building committee part of your Oh yeah, yeah, we did have that. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I knew I, I knew I went somewhere else, did something else. The municipal building committee. Thank you. Um, and our discussion at the meeting was that we're going to try and put together a document to put out at town meeting to let people know what deficiencies exist and what there is there that we have. What's good? What's bad? And that's ugly, basically. Um, and we're going to try and work on that at our next meeting to develop the grid to do it and get it all filled out and ready to go to town meeting so people can be aware um, of what the situation is, where it is. So that's, I think, a general answer to it. Thank you, Dana. Did you see that change? I didn't see it. And, uh, so, do we have recommendations for changes on the uh, request for proposal for the snow shovel? Darling, one of the ones I had is on the back, very last page. Mm -hmm. You've got tucked up under the, the snow rate shovelings that says shoveling of entrances, doors, and oil propane location. Yep. I would just put either F or uh, I or however you want to shove it in there, the pass to the propane and oil on the front page. Because that's a, that's a mandatory. Okay. <coughs> Just make that I. Yep. Oh, she might want to move it before references. I'll put it before that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll make references I and that one H. Perhaps two. How's that? Then the only other thing is if it does go out to bid, or even if it doesn't go out to bid, that last year one of the concerns that was brought forward was one of the bidders didn't bid because they thought they had to bid on the whole complete packet, and they said, no, it can be broken down. So under snow shoveling proposal, I said, may bid on all or any combination listed as project one, two, or the total project on the last page. Okay. I can give you this paper. That's fine. That's fine. And then my only other question is, I think the times need to be more than 9 o'clock, like the fire station. I don't know what time the chief gets in, but I think it's closer to 8, 8.30 versus 9. And the same way with the townhouse. I know we got people showing up at before, before 8 o'clock. Yeah, before 8 o'clock. Okay. So what time do you want that one on the townhouse now? I would say by 7.30. Yeah, I don't 
don't know. She and I pretty mean, much every day there is something there. Yeah, now. I was gonna say that one's gonna be seven days a week because there is pretty much something there every day, not Monday through Friday. Jim, do you want me to make yours earlier than nine to be shoveled out? Yeah, I would. I would think eight. at least go eight. Eight. I mean, the reality of fire stations is totally going left. Yeah, you don't know left. Right, you don't exactly. Know left, so. but, right. but at least the doors, the, the, the entrances that well, this isn't plowing, just right. the shoveling. So. Well, right. fortunately, their doors open in. Right. What's that? Do we only want it Monday through Friday? No, that's what we said. No, that needs to be up. seven days yeah. a week. Yeah, you take yeah. out the Monday so through the Friday? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For all yeah. of them. All the other ones go in. Well, that's yeah. true. Well, that's a fire station that says Monday through Friday. Yeah, yeah right. they all have to come out that Monday through Friday. Yeah. It can stay for the town office, though. So. Yeah, well, no, because the nurses are in there on Saturday sometimes. Oh, yeah. If you shovel, you've got to do it every day. Whenever yeah. the storm is, not right. Right. Monday yeah. through Friday. It's whenever it's Well, it, it was given a time. It's still saying it has to be done over the weekend to keep the building open, but it doesn't give a time. Because it says say, shoveling must be done on weekends to mm -hmm. keep the building open no. for access. This can be done at the end of the storm. And that's what's scary, because a lot of people yeah. say that. It should say... So it should take it out. Yeah, just, it should say it should shoveling leave. should be done by 7.45, 7.30, 8 a.m. after any snowstorm. Because we have a snowstorm on Sunday, it should be opened up by 7.45 if it rent, snows Saturday night into Sunday. So that... That so just take out. out the Monday through Fridays and put and after any this, snowstorm. And I'll take out this, the line after that. Yeah, what she said. And then even I, I wonder if that's going to, yeah. you know, if all of them are by that hour, that's pretty, I mean, you've got a fair amount of shoveling to do. You're not going to do all that in right. a yeah, couple hours. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, but they can start as early as they want to get them open by that time. I mean, we have people using the buildings by that time. So and it right. no, might I'm, not I'm, just be one person either. I was going to say, if you do all these jobs and you get a good snow, you're going to have, have to have a couple people doing it. Mm. Right. Because by the time you get one done one place, <laughs> the other one's right, filled well, that's right what back I'm thinking, up. Is there's no way that one person could... Deal with it, but if if it breaks down and somebody right. only does the town office yep. and townhouse, and then somebody does the fire stations, yeah. And I mean, I guess the other question is, do we want it just as a, a bid <coughs> to do it? Period. You know, you figure out how many storms it's going to be and all that, or hourly or per, per storm. storm. You know. Because last year we did it for the season. Right. right. So right. Do we know it, also, be it also included I think you know, plowing, so there was a lot more to it than just shoveling. Um, I mean, you could do it hourly. I was going to say, would it be more cost effective doing it hourly? Then you're only well, paying, you're only paying it's small. Sure. It depends on whether you've got somebody who knows how to shovel or not. <laughs> I hate doing it by the storm because I, I know you burn if you do it for the season and you only have five snowstorms, but chances are you never have five snowstorms. <laughs> I think the average that the state figures is at 18. Yeah, I thought it was 18 for DOT. But, well, but that started the season. That's November to... I think it needs yeah. Right. And that's what we're looking for. It's the winter season. Yeah, because by Please. rights, last year our contracts went from October 1st yeah. to May 1st. So we're really getting So it's only two projects. It's only two projects. Because Project yeah. 3 was a police station, but that's right. off. Yeah. Well, Project 3 could be bidding on both if they want to do yeah. a, a cheaper oh, bid for both. Okay. That's why. I'll leave that on it. I'll put it. Yeah, because if, if they want to do, you know, just to, yeah, I'd put down both. I think that makes sense. And I guess people do it different ways. I mean, I don't know whether we're thinking about these per diem people being town employees or, you know, otherwise they're going to have to have insurance. Well, Richard yeah. said he didn't have anybody. He didn't have, have anybody. He, he doesn't, doesn't have, have anybody, anybody interested. No. So, so that this is, they're non-town employees, so they would Correct. be. But are you, these single guys that you're talking about, are they going to be able to get insurance? It's not much to get insurance. No, that's cheap. That's cheap. Okay. But the one that we're talking about is a town employee per He's diem. He's a per diem, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that we should approach yeah. that individual. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. For the transfer station. Yeah. 
who's very interested in doing it, who's a very good worker. Well, you'll know by tomorrow, right? From if what? Rich is going to call, I Rich hope is so. going to call me. And Rich is going to, and Aaron, didn't you say he was? Yeah. So we'll know by tomorrow. So by next week, we can decide whether we're putting it out to bid or we're going with a per diem that's already on the payroll. Right. Yeah. Okay. About with these play. corrections. So if the employee that's on the payroll says, what's it entail? My, my question on this is, okay, you get a snowstorm, you've got five hours of labor here, plus his other job that he's doing for the town, how much of it's going to wind up being over? It depends on who the employee is, how much is being used per diem at the transfer station. Is that Nothing right now. No. Right. Oh, okay. All right. Because it was a transfer station right. employee, not a yeah. highway department employee. Right. Well, yeah. That would be the ideal. Yeah, yeah. If somebody do it, it's ideal. Did you have, <laughs> you had specific um, changes on yours that you wanted to make on the town? Uh, well, when, 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 when it's just, when it's decided by <clears throat> whoever, mm -hmm. just to show them not to shovel like, so you don't want it written in here, you're going to show no, them. I okay. would show them. And, and I think the other thing that's, so important is that they need to know at the end of the walk out here you have to shovel back to the curb so it drains so you don't get a puddle out. Mm -hmm. Same thing at the, at the townhouse. You have to shovel back to the curb. Well, you can't just let it build up there because you do it and just puddles water. Does some of that build up happen because of the plows? Plowing? No. no. No, it was just they never cleaned it out. Okay. You gotta clean it out. Down at the townhouse. They, they shoveled right close to the building and then went around the corner. What they needed to do was come out because then all the snow fell off the roof right there. So they never got it shoveled down. Yeah. And in the past, you go away from the building go and around. go around and just a little short trail to the oil fill. Which well, the ideal situation is once we get the individuals to right. do a walkabout with right. them. Mm -hmm. So at it's every place... Right. Yeah. And you get the department head who's in charge of that and say, this is what I expect, this is... Yeah, needs. this is where to go. Yeah, and so I that there is no question. My question at the townhouse is, do we need to shovel out that lower entrance? Second means egress in case of a fire. Yeah. Basement. Mm -hmm. Oh, in the basement. The basement. But the oh, I know, but you've really got. When but that is not accessible to the public. No. Right. right. So that's, that's not part of the egress. Right. What? That's not part of the egress. Right. right. No. I mean, because we have a sign on the door. It says not an exit, and it's yeah. blocked up. So I mean, because that's that, right. that's yeah. down in a hole. That's a really tough. Well, shot. I think they already shoveled it before to keep the water out of running through the basement yeah. windows, and now that the window's been replaced, probably I think get away with that. We're in pretty good shape with a sump pump there and dry and good things. So that'll be part of the walk around. Right. But well, I mean, that was part of the list here of things to do. That's oh, then that needs to come up. Right. Um, but I guess it's on your sheet. Right, that's just a thought. Oh, yeah. We good on that? Good on that. Mel, did you have something else? That's it. Darlene. Um, so, the first, um, Budget meeting is scheduled for October 24th. Um, we'll have the budgets hopefully out by Tuesday. We did have questions. Generally, we would submit the first budget to the board with no salary. Are you interested to see it with no salary, or do you want to send it, see it with what we have now? I say send it with no or, salary. Well, I think having... Salary there is important because then you can see the total picture of the cost of the department. And right. It makes. I mean. I mean, if we make changes to salaries along the way, we'll certainly can change it. Um, but the less blank spaces there are, the better off you are. Yeah. What ones are coming in on the twenty fourth? Uh, I don't have my list in front of me. Um, transfer station, highway, parks and rec. Swim, planning, conservation, EDC, treasury, general assistance, and health. Becky. 
I'm on this side. You're here. <laughs> I mean, most of those are easy. I think I've allotted five or ten minutes for most of those. Um, so. Yeah. Can you? Repeat well, I'll be sending. I'll be sending everything over to you guys, and you guys are going to get the budget sheets and all that. Um, when when they're done, we'll have to put the salaries in and stuff. Um, so. What we need. Yeah, because we kind of wanted, the budget committee kind of wanted to meet before we meet with you guys to just kind of... All right, well, Kathy's got to put all the salaries in. We had questions to ask the board, so yeah. they're okay. not quite ready yet. Okay. But as soon as we get them ready, we'll okay. send them over. Hopefully and she'll get to it tomorrow. When you say Tuesday, like Tuesday morning so we can maybe have a meeting Tuesday night or like... Okay, we'll have I'll, a meeting let, I'll have her... Wednesday I'll night. let you know. Okay. Well, plan your meeting for Tuesday night. Okay. All right. And we're all meeting, Budget Committee That's and correct. Select Board, from 5.30 to 7.30 on the 24th. Yeah. Just want to double confirm the time we're meeting. Yes. Do you need a table? Ah, I, yes, I want to bring one. I think there's a one six foot table. I'm not positive. I'll just bring a six foot table. Okay. That we can just leave here through the budget That's season. Fine. Perfect. Yep. We can find a spot for it. Mm -hmm. okay. downstairs, yeah. We'll walk one over. <laughs> so... I can bring one over tomorrow if you let me know which one because anyone I'm that's the not chairs down. back. Anyone that's not down? Yeah. Like the brown one? Nope. nope. <laughs> the white one. One of the, the brown white ones? ones eight. Okay. Yeah. The eighth there? No. Well, we don't need that because there's only three of them. Three or four. Okay. The white one. Yeah. Oh, that's probably the size we have downstairs. I was going to say because it's not the length of this table. No. no, there is one downstairs. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll it's, um, we leave. it's Kim's. I'll have to ask huh? her. But, but we don't have as many people on the table. That's what she uses the for. The electric. No, I say we'll we have, have that over there. Before we oh, it's not yeah. anymore? If not, I'll okay. steal one tomorrow while yeah. we're returning chairs. All right, then you need to bring one over here. Yeah, yeah. Kim's is at the town I thought Kim's was downstairs. All right, so keep it there. That's just a four-foot table. We'll bring it tomorrow after we drop off the library chair. Okay. So the MS1 extension was approved to October 31st. We're still, now that the redolls done, we've started to test the MS1, which we've never done on Avatar before. So there are a few little kinks we're still working on. We've got three of the four utilities. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we're waiting for GSP with no idea of when that's going to happen. So actually, my recommendation would be, let's pick a date. Hopefully, the MS1 will be ready within a day or two with the kinks. Because we're working with Avatar right now. And it's right due now. on the 31st, so we need to have it before the 31st. If they haven't given us, well, the we answer. can. If they haven't given us the answer, we still we would call them again and say we need another extension. And this is not our fault, but we don't want to do that this year. And no, I'm not if we can have it by the 24th, get it done by the 24th, so. then we can look at it and it can go. Yep. Yeah. And if we don't have their value like we did last year, we'll evaluate them at what we think is their evaluation right. rate and then Rod, they'll get back to us. Rod actually just recommended that you just use the, the rate from last year. Right. Even though the whole town value went up, those are, those are state rates and they're usually on the lower side, so, you know. But I say, if they don't like it, they'll get back in touch with us. Yeah, yeah. I might have had a dollar or two just to yeah. keep Well, honest. you should certainly could do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hey, yeah, so he's still, he's still he's still um, he's still verifying values in Avatar as well with the reval. So hopefully it'll all work for the twenty. And the MS one doesn't have any of the overlay on it, correct? No. Okay. Yeah. No. That's something we'll need to discuss. Yeah, we need yes. to discuss that soon. Uh, snow shoveling we talked about. Um, so, so the hearings were all done for the reval. They went really well. Um, the follow-up letters from all the hearings went out today. So everybody that Rod met with or spoke with over those four days. He sent them a letter sent letters. Of, of stating this, we agree, we disagree, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Yeah, with, the new, with their new yeah. tax card. So those went out today. Um, and so uh, the blood board pathogen policy, we'll read this again once we get one from Jim. Well, and I want to add to it, this is a lot that's required by law that's not in there, like the hepatitis B vaccine, and I know you put some follow-up, but there's much more stringent follow-up about you have to do for if there's an exposure and stuff like that, so okay. I want to make sure That was just a starting point get to draft, his. so... Yep. Yeah, both combined, like we so need. cover it. Well, at least get them so they read the same. <laughs> yeah, we have a whole notebook that's 
procedures. Oh, I know. And in that one you gave us, it said a section, C section 3, and there was no section 3 attached with it. I mean, I know mine at the, mine at my last place of business was like this, so it's big. And then you have to train everybody. Um, I, I haven't heard, I actually didn't get a date from planning board when they wanted your um, comments for the wireless service facility ordinance, so um, Maybe I'll can. reach out to him again. The reason I asked is because as Pat found out at the broadband like I did, which I understand they've been working with a legal company as well, but mm -hmm. Wolfboro said they ended up having it, and I'd like to see what their comments are compared to what our ordinance reads to it never hurts to have a second opinion all the way around. Right. And he's supposed to send that out to everybody, so. I think their goal is that they just want to make sure that they have the public hearing and that it goes to the to town, meeting. town meeting. It does, I thought it does not have to go to town meeting. It doesn't have to be voted on a town um, meeting? I can tell you how come ordinance, I Ordinance, yes, it does. What? If it's an ordinance, it does. Um, I was at the LRPC meeting where there were 12 representatives of 12 towns, whatever, and I said, could I ask a question? Because there was a question at the planning board about the yes, no, whatever, whatever. And the comments were, and I will quote, if I can look it up. You um, They said the planning board is, is, owns the master plan. Okay, that's different. I'm talking, I'm sorry. Yeah, this it's is the master plan I'm talking about. This. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, this is not so a document. Too many documents in my life, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I mean, board. this is not dire straight. I mean, we're going to definitely have to have a public hearing probably oh, yeah. January. Yeah, it has to And then yeah. it'll be going before Correct. the town well, meeting more, in March. No. Well, that's why I wondered when they want our input back on it, because <clears> right. if there's any questions we have, they've got to have a little prep time as well. And you so. sent us that, right? Yeah, so yeah. I now actually gave you hard copies. They came in with hard yeah. copies two weeks ago. Copy, okay, yeah. Okay. you already gave me hard copies. Yeah. I to make piles of paper on my desk. Regarding the letter from one Lance at Chapel. Start again. Yes. They're asking for the town suggestions on who we would like to see them donate to is instead of a pilot. Does it Becky have had to commented well that was just you know, off the top, the top of, of my head, head right so, it, but um, I think whoever they because we support a lot so if they are willing to make a donation to them in lieu of pilot then we ought to be able to subtract their that's appropriation to cover what they received in donations so they can choose the entity of their choice. I had just come up with a couple that are big hitters in our town that cost taxpayers. If they want to come up with somebody in an amount, as long as they notify us who it is so we can reduce that amount to be raised by taxes. That's all I was thinking. You're, you're actually, you, was, you wrote visiting nurse, but did you mean them? T -C yes. TCMA. But, I mean, I think they but should they be allowed to come to up choose. with whatever they mm -hmm. want. I think they were looking for suggestions from you so I could... Whether it's the school, whether it's a scholarship, whether it's whatever that we can subtract off from what we're raising from taxes. I, I would all. not go to the school as much as I would to one of the organizations that, because in the school budget it'll get lost. Mm. Well, I'm thinking school is <laughs> in, you know, library or that's... Yeah. Uh, but if they wanted to do the library, that'd be fine too. Yeah, that's what I thought. You know, but if they would just library. let us know who and how much, then we'll reduce mm -hmm. the amount we raise from taxes because we're anticipating funds to offset. Right. So they still put their budget together the way they normally do, and you just at town meeting say... Yep. You know, I mean, it's a lot more verbiage at town meeting. X but number of dollars to come from <clears throat> a donation. I think that's the way to do it. And of course, it's worth they don't donate. Bad for them. Talk about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, but then mm -hmm. that, I tried. It's, I'm no. not there yet. Oh, you're not. Okay. <laughs> I told you. Yeah, the page. two pages were. Oh, right. going. <laughs> um, stuff that came in today. So um, I had offered DRA to hold that class. It's not my favorite topic. Um, you want me to hold off for the exemptions and credits, or? Well, they yeah. just be a good neighbor and and have the class. Exemptions and credit? It's just that that would just be a highlight yeah. in that mini course, and that's I wanted the whole mini course to be on those. This I is more assessing. 
Yeah, I think if we can just do, if they can do that mini course on exemptions, I mean, I... They don't have a teacher yet. That's why they can't do it. So I can hold off, though, until yeah. they find somebody to teach it. Okay. I mean, I, unless they've got anything else that's of interest to us. Okay. <laughs> they could do current use, which is always a good well, one. Well, that's become a real hot topic. I just got something from, um... And they could do veterans exemptions. Which I meant to send out. I just got something from the Albany Selectman on business news and something regarding New Hampshire about New Hampshire being one of the highest states of current use and how they're looking at it, calling it usable now because the amount of income and the way it's affecting municipalities to offset tax rate. Maybe we should have them do something on current use. I'll ask her about that one. So um, today I just received the check from Jeep, $250. Would the board like to vote to accept and expend that? I make the motion to, to accept a check from Jeep Corporation for $250 and to expend such said monies on the townhouse. Second. It, it's not from Jeep itself. It's from a photography. Yeah, it's from... Oh, excuse it's me. It's A.J. Mueller Photography, I who is from but for Jeep. I would change like my that. motion to whatever the name of that. AJ Mueller photography. AJ Mueller photography. photography. Second. Yeah. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I have sent a letter to David Haskell regarding the Veterans um, Committee yep. fund. I haven't heard back from him yet. Good. And um, we He's did. Like, you don't have any information. We Richard, that is come? No, Richard does not have Richard it. Says he doesn't Everybody's have saying it. they don't have anything. We want to get it. Right. <coughs> Richard said he doesn't. He's never had anything. Right. Who who brought that up? Haskell. To you. Yeah, to the committee. Well, I'm getting and that a he, letter. That really? Richard is on the sign card for the bank. What bank? Northwest. Did anybody go down and ask the bank? No. I suppose I could. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's I the only way we're going to settle yeah, it because Richard didn't wouldn't. say said he didn't, so we're sending a letter to Haskell to find out what he knows. We need to get something in writing from some people saying yeah. they don't know. We don't know. We don't have it, or so and so has it, and so and so needs to say. Well, just next to clean meeting, it up. I'll get the the documents that I have that was yeah. turned over to us. <clears throat> okay. Right. Yeah. And ask, can you stop at the bank? Yeah. We also received a check for $52,013.06, which is half of the estimated amount for the 2020 municipal aid from the state. Um, so as of now, we can either just say that we'll use the money to reduce taxes, but if you want to expend it on anything, we'll have to hold the public hearing to accept and expend under 3195, which is fine. We can do both. Or, you know, we don't have to do the public hearing if you're just going to use it for taxes. I would say use it for taxes. That's my this recommendation. One half of what we're One doing. half. The next half will be, uh, we'll get um, October, on or before October 1st of 2020. So half this year and half next year. And what did we anticipate in our revenue? Nothing, because we didn't know about it. This okay. was for, this is the H, um, that House Bill 4. Oh, okay. This is a new, new piece. Okay. Yeah, this All right. is a new piece. So next year, we'll include half of it in the budget, and then we won't have to right. do the public hearing because it won't be an unanticipated. Right. I would say offset. And that money is fle it's going to fluctuate, so we're going to have to put in a round number. Right. I would say offset taxes because everybody's paying taxes to raise that money anyway. Yeah, it's a no brain. Yeah. Offset yeah. taxes. So, do you still want to hold the public hearing just to be on the safe side? I mean, they're telling us we don't have to, but... It, it takes and two actually, seconds to hold the, the public hearing. Right. Yeah. right. Other Better than to, the cost of posting yeah. it. Right. In the paper and Post stuff. It, Post and it, and then let's so do I'll a do public it hearing. And then... And yep. There's no question. I have no question. Yeah. I and tend to really schedule them for the And we're going to put that money to offset taxes for 20, okay. 2020. I'm going to save the best for last. Well, we're get, well, but are we, uh, we've got that money already, so we got can it. actually set off, offset the 2019 taxes. That's right. That's yeah. exactly what they said well, yeah. to do with it. So Better if you're going to do the 2019 taxes, you didn't have to hold the public hearing. And the reason being, some people are already getting their tax rates. Right. Yeah. So the question I have is, have we gotten all of our monies 
revenue sharing from the state. I don't know about the room and meals. That usually comes in. Right I, I, did, I, I didn't haven't see it. Any, on, I, I didn't haven't see seen it that on yet. Revenue. No, report, I haven't seen so. that yet. Somebody and we've got. And we were up in Conway at a meeting. They said they normally get those uh, late October, yeah, mid November around this for time, meals and room and meals. Because they hadn't gotten theirs either. Right, they were okay, expecting just, it late right. October, mid November. Sure we no. Well, that's a biggie. Sure, that we sure. would notice. <laughs> so public hearing. Yeah, we'll give you this chunk, but we're going to hold this chunk. <laughs> Was there ever a hearing on the six thousand for? Fireworks? Did that money ever come in? I don't see that in the revenue. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to look. I don't remember. I didn't see it in the revenue. Okay. Darling, you got more? No. All right. Okay. Moving on. Fireworks. Public comment. Yes. I just have one question. Um, as budget committee regarding the police department timesheets, has there any, been any decision by the board regarding that yet? Do you want to go into non-public to talk about that? Is For a minute, meeting, is it? What's that? They're it's not here. Meeting. They're not here. So to be a non-public. Because no decisions have been made until we talk about it. Right. No, we haven't. That's all I want. No. We haven't no made decisions been made because the board hasn't <coughs> talked about it. <coughs> Anything else? Darlene asked me to, I guess the board asked about the signed, dedicated verge to my father. Yeah. Sure, just before he came in, to, if I knew anything, which I happened to. <laughs> By chance, it was on my mind a week and a half, two weeks ago. So I went online and I looked to see what the status of the bill was. And it was signed by the governor, I think, on September 9th. So that completes the whole process. It's official. It's done. So I reached out <clears throat> to the DOT Bureau of Traffic, who makes the signs, because I think well brought up that we wanted that yeah, middle, in, middle initial on there. Nice. And, and I noticed it wasn't in the bill. Uh, it was three quarters of the way through. I'm like, oh, do you bring it up? Do you know it's uh -huh. the same? So I contacted the Bureau Administrator for the Bureau of Traffic and I said, hey, I noticed the bill is complete, it's official, I really want the sign to have a middle initial on it. He got back to me and he said, we have a long-standing policy of doing it exactly like the bill says to stay out of trouble, but if you promise that we won't get in trouble. Not to tell anybody. Right. <laughs> no. Just tell everybody. No. If you promise I won't, we won't get chastised by the public for putting it in, I'll do it yeah, on your say-so, say, on your say right. so basically. Correct. And I said, no, I'd be more concerned if you don't do it. Right. Yeah. 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 So, no date when they're going to do it, but it's, you know. It's in the works. It's, it's in, in the, the works. Deal. Perfect. Yeah. Anything so, else? But there is, as I recall, <clears throat> we have to buy the sign. That's correct, and, and the folks agreed to it, but the, the family <coughs> decided that Dad would rather the town not pay for the sign. So well, there's a little money left in Dad's life insurance, and my mother says we're buying the sign. Well, thank you very much. That's, so that's just that's very sort nice. of Dad's way, and <coughs> yep, well, like I said, after paying for the gasket and all that good stuff, there's, there's a little left. all and, left. Huh? And, good. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. um, one thing I was—I had not been in a townhouse for ever, and it was—it was beautiful. And I just wanted to tell you guys, you did a great job. The floors are glowing, the walls are glowing. It was—I was proud to have everybody there today. And the other thing that struck me because we were discussing the broadband there, and it occurred to me—you know—the thing about the census where they say, okay, libraries, schools, town offices, whatever. Why wouldn't that count as having broadband there? There's a number of ranges came to mind because there's a lot of com a lot of towns that use their ranges for general meetings and everything right. now. So I think we'll expand on that. I, I thought of that afterwards. Good. It was funny because we were talking why available broadband to everybody, 
and I've had a lot of issues over the past two weeks, like every 45 minutes getting kicked off. Mm -hmm. The four of them tried to sign on down at the townhouse and none of them could get connected because it wasn't functioning enough to connect. Spectrum was out mm. Spectrum was out yeah. today, though. Yeah, and it was out at my house. Oh no, no, no! I know so, that, but oh. it was funny that they were saying, "Here we are talking broadband, right. needing to be accessible, and, we, yeah. and there are 20 of us sitting here, and nobody <laughs> can assess the broadband." And then it occurred to me because the town offices, the yep. town buildings, are supposed to have it included. Well, well it's the well, same thing. They don't think of people like town included, nurses, but it's. No, it's included. Because some of them have separate buildings. So they don't so have slow that you can't do anything. Well, the thing of it is, is this was some of the information we have to gather right. when they want the mm -hmm. things. They were talking municipal buildings and churches and schools, and, and I agree. Other things came to mind after you walk out of the mill building. Like, we're lucky our nurses are situated here. But a lot of visiting nurses are separate from, they have their own separate buildings, which would be considered under that band of hospitals, libraries, mm -hmm. and whatever. Yep. So, more to come. Well, of course, Special. are we getting broadband? That's the question. Because broadband's defined as 25. According up. to the state, it's 25 yeah. up, 3 down. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's all yeah, you can 25 use. Down. 25. No, I got it right here. Down, Hang on, I got it right here. 25 down, 3 up. I think it's 25 Little down, up. 3 up. Large down. Alrighty. Anyway. Yeah. It was 25, 3 up. Yeah. 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 Down. Any other further comment? No. Alrighty, with that being said, I'm going to make a motion that we go into non public under RSA 91A colon 32. Uh, A and C. A and C. Second. Coria, yes. Mason, yes. Ricker, yes. Burnham, yes. Streeter, yes. I'm going to resume the meeting. I came out of non-public. I'm going to make a motion that the non-public meeting that we just had for session one and two be sealed. Second. Second. Oh, go ahead. Poria says yes. Mason. Mason, yes. Can I say yes even? Oh, that, no, yeah, this one. Yeah, yes. I thought you guys were. Never mind. Brain Farnham, farm. yes. Streeting, yes. All right. With well, that being said. Sure. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.